All right, time now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street. Financial expert Rob Black joining us this morning. And Rob, we're taking a look at the markets now on this uh, Thursday morning. And as I'm refreshing the screen, I can see where, boy, but the Dow up more than 200 points. That's not bad. Yeah, it's a lot of banks that are doing it. And remember how at the start of the year we had a couple of bank failures like Silicon Valley Bank? That seems to be in the rear view. The Federal Reserve, part of their job is not only to raise interest rates or lower interest rates, but it's to stress test banks. And they passed all the banks did last night. So there's some relief that there's no damage coming anytime soon. Uh, there's also positive news this morning that you know, the jobless claims, uh, first time unemployment claims were uh, lower than expected. And we're not looking anywhere near recession at all. Um, Generation Z has taken on too much debt, up 99% minus mortgages mm. in the last two years. Um, that's concerning because I think those, that's where your kids are. Uh, millennials um, are raising debt by about 21%. Our generation, James, we're cutting debt by about 3% year over year. And um, <laughs> boomers are cutting about 26%. So watch out, Generation Z. You're, you're accumulating debt quickly, right before you get a house, it gets even more stressful. Are there and Biden said today, um, his administration, that they're going to give a three-month grace period for college repayments when they um, start back up this uh, summer. Mm. I was just curious, that Gen Z thing, is. are there any metrics yet? Or do we know like what where that debt's coming from? What are they spending money on? Credit card debt is, is mostly the issue. Um, and it's sad because um, they were saving money in the pandemic and now they're they're racking up debt because they feel that retirement's not gonna be uh, within their grasp. They're just spending now instead of saving. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, that's not good. Let's talk quickly a, about a lot of travel. To, a lot of travel to answer your question. Yeah, a lot of travel. Well, speaking of which, uh, one of our big stories this morning is the fact that we've got bad weather across the country that's disrupting flights here as we're getting into the Fourth of July holiday weekend, um, and that's uh, I see a big concern too. The markets reacting to that. What's your take? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, severe weather, um, thunderstorms in particular, they come very quick. Airlines can't do much about it. There's a shortage of air traffic controllers. There's a shortage of flight attendants. So moving crews around fast is is, is, is brutal. United's actually paying their flight attendants triple time um, this week uh, to try to get them motivated to come into work and not call out sick. Um, but yeah, the weather is a problem. 4.2 million people are gonna fly this week uh, for 4th of July. That's up 11% year over year. It's topping pre-pandemic levels, which is great news. But so far in this week, we've already seen 15,000 flights delayed, 5,000 canceled, 30,000 coming in late. And it's hitting all the big hubs, the weather. So John has to change the forecast a little bit for yeah. us. Uh, New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, DC, Chicago. Check if you're going to those, those areas because a lot of flights are getting canceled. Um, and ultimately, this is the summertime. And this mm -hmm. is when the airlines make the the for their product, uh, money, like retailers make money during the Christmas holiday seasons. Airlines make it during the summer as we start to splurge on travel. Interesting, okay. And then I gotta bring up, yesterday we talked about summer blockbuster movies and we did yeah. bring up Barbie, which is coming out next month. What's the deal with this headline I'm seeing here? 2023 is the summer of Barbie. Everybody's getting on the Barbie bandwagon, huh? I wouldn't have put you through this. I thought I had Daria today, but um, <laughs> Summer of Barbie. There's an Airbnb that we've all seen now, and you can go to Airbnb and check it out. Ken is giving away two one-night stays. Uh, it's very promotional. It's over the top. Mm. Uh, it's free because Ken knows beach. He doesn't know money. Um, I went to the YouTube to watch the video of the, uh, 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 the help me here. About the trailer? The trailer, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 35 million people have watched it. And James, I can't figure out what it's about. I'm not even close to figuring out what the plot's going to be. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. It's a cultural event. Um, you know, it's going to be fun because there's a lot of viral stunts going on. Yeah. A lot of people are decorating their houses now in hot pink, and that's called Barbie Core. If you want to learn a new word for the day, Pinterest wow. searches on Barbie are up 1135% wow. this month. Barbie came out in 1959, and Mattel needs this. They've they've marketed, um, they've partnered with over 100 plus partners to do things like Xbox is going to come out with a Barbie Xbox. So it's going to be pink. Yeah. Um, Ruggable is coming out with rugs that look like her Malibu dream house. Um, Aldo, which is a fashion company, they're coming out with pink shoes. And uh, they're trying to get all the social media influencers in on the craze as well. So you're going to see a lot of Barbie stuff in the uh, next month, James. Do you think it's like a, it's like, a, it's a nostalgia play, right? I mean, that's partly why uh, Stranger Things got so big, because it was harkening back to the 80s. A lot of people had some feel-good things going on there. Is this kind of like playing along those lines? 
it's interesting because it's um, intellectual property, and Mario did really well because mm-hmm. of a nostalgia play, like you said. Um, not all nostalgia plays are working out as well, and um, the stock Mattel is really, really struggling yeah. um, because kids aren't buying Barbie dolls. So this should help Barbie and Mattel a little bit, okay. but kids want laptops. They don't want our notebooks or um, uh, iPads and New social VR media. headset or something. <laughs> I don't think this is going to have a lot of staying power for the stock, but okay. it, it is interesting to watch from my perspective. Okay. Well, good. Well, we'll and we will continue watching it. It comes out next month. Rob, thank you as always. We'll see Rob on Monday, so let him know now what you want him to chat about. You can reach him on social media, Facebook, Twitter handles there. You can always email him directly. He'll love to respond to you. Rob at robblack.com.